Welcome back to JLW2 Gaming for the third installment of the HUD. So let's get started right off. We're going to look at the mail. Mail is pretty straightforward. It's where you get your inbox. That's where you get your. That's where you compose your messages. Make sure you put a tub a subject in if you need to. Um, if you actually have to pick something up from the mail, say there's an actual package in here, an item, you actually have to go to a mailbox, which would look something like that council over there. They're all over in the game, different ways to get there. But for the most part, it will be there. If you have to put something into a mail to send it to somebody else, you have to go there. Next up, we have social. We've already discussed this before. Find a team, find a fleet, team settings. Change, if you're the leader, you can change all this. Friends, your friends list, ignored, people you've put on ignore, and search everybody in the area. Next up is game menu. This is a very important one. You can rearrange the HUD. That means everything on your HUD you can move around. Your mini map, you can put it, you want your power tray over here because you like it over here, doesn't matter. You can put anything anywhere. Hit escape to exit. Next up, options. Options are a big thing. As I said, the first thing we're going to do is go over here, make sure this voice chat is disabled. Um, we're actually going to go to our to Yeti because I'm using a Yeti microphone and headphones. Then we're going to hit apply. Basically, we're going to go back here to basic and uh, enable the directional sh shield FX, how your shields look, uh, compact UI, move equipment items, newly rendered ship so basically you can turn off the ability say you get a new ship it'll move all your gear from one ship to the other you can turn that off difficulty you can change your difficulty um, you can also do that in the game right under we'll show that when we get there but yeah you can do that whoops wrong one all this stuff you can change if you're running a slower computer, I suggest turning off everything that could possibly uh, slow you down more or make it fill up faster. Controller, using joysticks and Xbox game pads. I don't actually use one, but it automatically sets it to on. Audio, you can crank up your audio. You can hear the volume go up, down, up, yep. Pretty simple, straightforward. Digital signaling processing. Mute voice after dialogue. Yep. Voice chat. As I said, turn this off. Rest of it, most of it, you don't even need. Display. If you are running full screen, it takes less draw on your computer to run in Windows Maximized or Windowed mode. This is a big one if you are running a slower computer to make sure you are on full screen. Vertical sync, if you can, I highly recommend it. Highest resolution scales, if you can run it. If you are on a slow computer, don't bother. You can slow all this stuff down and it'll save you a little bit. Render qualities, you can turn all this stuff down if you are on a slower computer. I am not, so I can run at max. Advanced. File streaming. Software cursor. Uh, bloom intensity. You can turn it all up and down. I highly recommend looking through this entire page. Controls. One thing what we're going to do is... We're going to turn this on and say non-combat cancels. This is for our auto attack. And we want our auto attack to shut off whenever I get out of combat. So basically when there is nobody there, you're not still trying to attack it. And the rest of this, click on selects target, 
all this good stuff. You can change any bit of it. In space, down here on the move is fine, but in space I always change it. We'll do that when we get up to space. Keybinds, you can change out your keybinds to pretty much anything you want. We'll get into more keybinds later and a program that will actually help you out. HUD, and this is all what you can see. Everything can be turned on and off in this game. Chat, these are your chat settings. You can change it all, as I said before. Chat settings, again, it's another way from down here to change your colors and what have you. Change character will log us out, and if we have another character, log out, self-explanatory, exit, self-explanatory. Now, this little question mark is help and support. If you need to put in a ticket, request GM, report bugs, what's new, when you come in, this will be flashing. If you click on what's new, it basically tells you what's new in Awakening, and that will shut off the flashing part. Access library computer. There are different quests that allow, need you to access computers. Uh, you can turn off your helps tips. Basically little pop-ups as we're running around, you'll see them. I don't mind them, so it doesn't really bother me. And you can view your tickets. Next up, we have down here is more. It's a little arrow facing down. We have the Dilithium Exchange, which is psychotically high at the moment. 500 is the cap. It cannot go higher than 500. But last year at this time, it was sitting around 240. So you can see that in the last year, it has just gone psychotic. Um, basically, this is where you would sell your Dilithium. I believe we've talked about Dilithium. You sell your Dilithium for Zen. This is where you sell Zen for Dilithium. And this is the history of all your buys. Pretty self-explanatory. I wouldn't sell Dilithium right now. There's no way. It's just too... You're, you're being taken advantage of as the guy that... You can only refine 9,000 a day if you're a lifer. 8,500 if you're not a lifer. And that's with a lot of work. First, you got to get the 8,000 to refine it a day. Then, that's a lot of work to get 8,000 to lithium. And you're selling 471 of the of refined lithiums for one zen? I can't even ref... That's like nuts. So, next up... We have Endeavor progression. Endeavors are shut off for us. It gave me a perk point. Interesting, I didn't know that. Um, basically, it allows us to choose one every time. There's all kinds of different ones, but they do a random thing. Endeavors are highly worth doing. I completely would say do your endeavors every day. They are very worth doing because you get things like shield hardness, sprint speed, damage resist, control resist, critical chance, critical chance space, critical severity, critical severity ground. These are really good to have. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're energy weapon damage. They're very good to have. Well, out of all these, I'm going to take shield hardness space. And I don't know why they gave me an Endeavor point, because they don't even open up till 50. But they do. So now we all know that when you first come into the game, you get one Endeavor point. Either that or it's bugged. Notification settings. If you don't like to see admins posting in bright pink on your screen, you can shut them off. Anything like that. You can shut it off in here. If you don't want to see fleet feedback mail, any of that. Next, 
music player. We can set up a music player. Nothing set up in there. Credits. I am not going to click credits because I don't want to see the credits. I If I click credits, the credits will roll. And I've already seen the credits. Next up, we have grayed out, but this is our fleet. I highly recommend joining a fleet, preferably a fleet that has voice chat. Voice chat is very helpful in this game, especially when you're trying to get better and learn more about building your character. It's way easier to talk to somebody in Discord than it is to type everything. You can convey the information, or they can convey the information to you way faster. Say like you're asking, let's see here. What shield should I get for my ship at level 65? Well, there's a whole lot they have to answer. You got to figure out what you're going to do with your character, how you're doing it. Are you tanking? Are you healing? Are you a science tune? All this matters. So there's a whole bunch of questions there that they're going to try to ask you because they're in this game, there is no meta. There is no get this shield, get this singularity core, get this impulse. You're good. It doesn't work that way in this game. There's 50 different ways to get to the same thing. So there is no meta. And that really makes discussing this stuff tough when you're typing. Okay. PVE. This is where you queue for PVE task force operations or TFOs. It's basically instances that you're queuing for. Usually five. Five people. Duty officers opens up at 11. It's basically your duty officers that are on your ship. You're sending them to do missions. Then we have our Dilithium store, which we click on special items and boxes. If you need an EV suit and do not have one, 100 Dilithium will get you a pre-owned one. It will get you through the mission. If you do not have an EV suit, this is where you get one. Reclaim experimental weapons. This one is given to every character because you gotta escorts have to have an experiment well they don't have to have it but have a slot for an experimental weapon and this is the one the default one that they give you it's not the greatest but it is an experimental weapon if you don't have one and then we have lock boxes which are free phoenix pack is going on now i would like to get up before it ends and actually get a couple Batteries, all stuff. I don't recommend buying this stuff with the lithium until you're way up because the lithium is too important in this game to be throwing away when you first come in. And then selling and buying back, which are almost always grayed out. Zen store. Zen store is where you buy stuff, of course. We have featured, which are all pretty much ships and ship related items on sale basically as it says everything that's on sale master keys for opening up lock boxes if you really want to gamble go for it right now the best deal out there is tier six ships gifts gift three you can give them to other players but for a tier six ship at four th or for three tier six ships at four thousand five hundred east or zen, if we go down here to ships, each ship is two thousand five hundred. So that's a pretty good deal, and these are on sale. But that probably won't be that way when you come into the game. So let's see, muds market is brand new. It changes all the time on a tier six or on a level 65 character, I got a lot more stuff in my market on my main account. New items, anything new in the game, starter packs. I'm not going to really recommend starter packs except for maybe this one. This ship levels with you to level 30, 35. I can't remember exactly what it is. I think it's 30. But this is a very good ship for leveling because it does open up more slots. All tier six ships now level with you. 
So you can get a tier 6 ship at level 1. And it will go with you through the entire game. Well, you're buying it with real money. But this one actually opens up more bridge officer slots and more weapon slots and council slots. So it's actually a little bit better for leveling because you get more damage output with it. We're not going to have that, of course, but yes, it's a nice ship. The other expansion packs, they're all right. I mean, you get some uniforms. Every packs pretty much give you a ship, but torn uniforms if you want a toss look. Okay, expansion packs, these are very good deals, especially when they're on sale, because like as you see, you get four ships here, five ships here. Uh, here you get more, and even more, more ships. You can get quite a few ships with these, and they do tell you exactly what you get down here. So you can go through and read it all and figure out everything that you'd get, and figure out which one you'd want. Ship bundles, we have all kinds of ships. Faction bundles, cross-faction bundles, there are a ton of different ships in this game, as you will find out. Some are useful, some are not. Ships, singly ships, you have tier one ships. This is what we are at right now, is tier one ship. But now, as I said, tier six ships level with you, so all these ships are viable options as well. If you... We are going to be on, we are on a Romulan, so we would need Romulan ships right now. Once we choose a side, which we're going to choose Fed, once you choose a side, you can fly the ships of that side. So as a Romulan, I can fly Romulan ships, or I can fly Fed ships. Or if I'm a Klingon, I can fly a Klingon ship. So, there is that. It is very nice to be able to buy the cross-faction ships. Now, everybody, if you're on just a normal fed tune, you can fly a Romulan ship now. So that helps. Anyhow, we have Tier 2 ships, Tier 3, Tier 4, Tier 5. Tier 5 ships are pretty close to a Tier 6 ship, except for you don't get the trait with a Tier 6 ship. They are very viable ships. Even at level 65, if you don't have a tier 6 ship, it's not the end of the world. You can still get by with a tier 5 ship. Small craft, basically your fighters and things like this. There are other places to get different ones in the game. But yeah, if you need a shuttle and you want to buy one, right here you go. Bridge packs, if you don't like the inside of your, your ship, you can change your bridge pack. Event buyout. Right now, this is the event buyout. It's the Kobayashi Maru. It's a little ship. It is not actually a flyable ship. It's a little ship that goes in your device slot that brings out this Kobayashi Maru and sets out buffs. It basically sends buffs at you. These little circle thing, that's a buff coming towards your ship. Say your ship's over here. Duty officers. These are duty officer packs. There are a lot of nice duty officers in here. You can also probably get most of them off the exchange if you need one. Fleet ship modules. If you're going to buy fleet ships, I would recommend having the Zen Store ship first. If there's no other option, it's a viable option. But if you have the Zen Store ship, you get the Council and the Trait. If you buy... The fleet version, right off the bat, it takes five ship model modules. If you have the same ship from the Zen store, it actually has, it only takes one to buy it. The fleet ship does have more hull and usually an extra council slot. So it is usually worth it to have it, but you're not getting the trait, which is a big chunk of DPS, as I've said in this game, or and or survivability. And you're not, let's see, the trait and what was the other thing? Damn it. Anyhow, you get the idea. Slots and services, bank slots, bridge officer slots, rename tokens, everything in there. You can look through it. Uniforms, 
make your character look the way you want your character to look. Get the uniforms that you want. Personnel, different. Okay, and you got Klingon and Romulan ones as well. Personnel. Borg Bridge Officer, if you want a Borg Bridge Officer, one for KDF, one for Fed. Um, if you want to play Cation or have a Cation Bridge Officer, yeah. Combat Companions, the, you can get them if you need them. Um, some of them are nice. This one's pretty decent, but you got to buy it for every character. Now, I'm not even going to go into that today. Companions, these are just pets. They don't do anything in the game except for look special. Species. If you want to play Acacian, you have to buy that ability. Cardassian, you got to buy that ability. Ferocin, you get the idea. Tribbles. Some of these are very nice. If you're playing with a tr team that has all IDC Tribbles, th that's very helpful. Um, some of them just give other things. Some of them are already available. Um... The reason is, is because they were giveaways and they allow everybody to have them. Basically, you just click on it and they won't let me claim it at level one. So, it won't let me reclaim that one anyhow. All is pretty straightforward. And I believe that's everything. So, then we have our mission journal. This is where new things show up, like event, Phoenix Prize Pack is going on right now. Episodes, these are all the episodes that are available to us right now, and we can't take any of them because there will be a little thing that's saying hail or transwarp here, or both, but we're not that far into the game yet. Available, Basically, the missions that we have available to us, which we have nothing. In progress, day at the farm, a day at the farm. Shows what you have in progress. If you get so many in here, it won't show. It shows them here. Here's also where we can change our difficulty level. If we want to do normal, advanced, elite, we can do that. We're going to go with normal difficulty. Accolades. Any accolades that we get show up here. There are accolade hunters that do this constantly. But yeah, some of them are very helpful to do because they will give you buffs like more damage versus Vaudoir or more damage versus this. So if you have it, you actually do a little bit more damage against those, making it a little easier. Logs, Captain's Log, what we're doing, welcome to Star Trek Online, Day at the Farm, Communications Log, Library computer we accessed earlier today. Yeah, pretty pretty simple. You can put new entries in and supplementals if you want to keep a log of everything that goes on in the game. I don't, but that's just me. Okay, scan the area. If there's something in the area that you need to find, say you're in a mission and this whole map thing blurs out up here, or for whatever. Sometimes they do that. Use the scan in the area. It is in space and in ground and it shows you where you need to be going. It also shows you where there are things you can pick up on the ground that are free. Um, basically little drops. Next up is Transwarp. We're not up in space. We'll be using this when we get up in space so we'll explain it more. Next is Beam to Ship. Not available because we don't have a ship yet. And that should be it for this episode. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.